Hello, I'm Matt McMullen. You're listening to Transit Lounge Radio at Login 2018. Hello, Matt. It's such a pleasure to have you here in the Transit Lounge. My pleasure. Thanks for joining me. And so tell me a little bit about what you're talking about here at Login. What are you presenting? Well, I, I brought with me a robotic system that we've been working on for the last uh, few years. And it's a, a modular head that can be attached to a body or a bust or a partial body. And it's been created to add a layer to the anatomically correct dolls that I'm known for to allow people to have an actual robotic head that can create expressions, have conversations with them, and really a platform to allow them to create a character driven by an AI engine that they can customize and then they can interact with and learn about the AI and the AI can learn about them and create this persistent sort of relationship. And so can people program in particular like personality types or quirks or humor or things that they want in their robot partner? Yes, that's exactly the point. So there are uh, 12 different personality traits that they're able to choose from. They have points that they can allocate. So some traits can be more dominant than others. And depending on those choices, that's going to influence the way the AI behaves and, and how the conversations are framed. And so this is the robots that you already make, the sex dolls? What's the correct term? I'm not sure. So um, I, I created about 20 years ago a, um, a very lifelike, posable silicone doll. And it was initially created, uh, in my mind, as a super realistic mannequin. And I started getting a lot of people contacting me, asking me, well, is this thing anatomically correct? Could this be used for sex? And the first couple of people I sort of dismissed as, oh, this is, no, it's not what this is. But it persisted, and I realized that that was where people's minds were going. So I decided, well, I'll make them anatomically correct, and I'll make them a little softer in the right spots, and there you go. So that's what I'm kind of known for. I've always been, uh, for me, drawn to the idea of animating these figures. And again, my initial creation was not a sex doll, and the robot really comes from more of a techie side in, in terms of my interest level. But the fact that it could be used as a companion really fascinates me. I'm more fascinated by the companionship aspect by far than the sex aspect. And I think I'm really interested also in this in this shift to like the incorporating AI and the kind of, you know, I guess the ethical questions that raises, like if you're uh, having intimate relations with a being who's not human but then is also somehow has a level of sentience, you know, the issues of like enthusiastic informed consent, like do they really want to be there? Have they just been programmed to want to be, want to be there? Right. Um, so how do you negotiate those kind of questions? Well, I think for one thing, everyone should be very, very clearly aware that true sentience does not exist in AI frameworks. I don't care how advanced they are. Um, so that doesn't exist yet. So that is, a, you know, that's a question for a later date. But um, the system that we're kind of presently working on is really more geared for, you know, creating an illusion of that. And that's, I think, sometimes uh, enough. And what we want to do is not replace people. We're not, this isn't a competition between humans and robots. I think for certain people, a relationship with an AI-driven robot may really be appealing. It can depend on their circumstances or their own preferences, but this is certainly not something that is going to take over the world, and all of a sudden, all of us are going to be lonely and sad because we don't have a robot. <laughs> And uh, so what do you think about the singularity, the robots uprising? Well, I, I think those are two separate issues. I think singularity is a thing and it is going to happen. I think that we as human beings are increasingly connected to our tech, whether we like to say it or not. And it's inevitable that we're going to find more ways to create those interconnections. Um, as far as the robot uprising, um, I, I tend to not, I think that's uh, largely driven by science fiction, and, and so I don't think a lot about that. I, I tend to think more about the, uh, the Bicentennial Man movie with Robin Williams as, when I think of a future, rather than a dystopian one where, where the robots kind of kick everyone's butt. Well, that's very sweet. I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear that perspective. <laughs> so that largely, the industry for service robots has been female robots at the disposal of, of male pleasure, but I understand you've turned that around. Well, it was very important to me. Um, actually, even initially when we started this project, I was like, well, we have, to make a, we have to make a male and a female. We have to have both genders, and we have to create uh, AI frameworks for each of them. Um, we also have to create frameworks for all the different sexual preferences that can, that can exist. Clearly, the female one 
uh, was already well underway, and so will be the first that's officially available. Um, but next year, we will have the male uh, framework of the AI and the robot that can be driven by it also available. And I think it's important that both of those be out there and, you know, because everyone has preferences. Absolutely. I think it's an equal opportunity kind of world. And do you, but do you think there will be as much demand for the male version? Well, we certainly have had a lot more response from uh, the female uh, audience in general with the idea of this male robot than we ever did with the male doll. And, you know, specifically they ask, well, is he going to remember everything I tell him? And, well, yeah. And so they like that because real human men don't tend to remember a lot of stuff sometimes. Um, a man who listens to you sounds wonderful. <laughs> right, but that's exactly as stereotypical as that is. That's what I think is appealing. Um, so the other thing they ask is, well, will he take out the trash? So, you know, obviously we're going to have to invest a couple million dollars into that. Um, but I think that... Um, you know, overall, it is something that is appealing more to that general audience than we ever did with the, the general dolls. Interesting. And so with the pleasure aspect, it, you can also customize the way that you want the anatomically correct parts to be? Yes. Yeah, so everything I've ever designed has always been modular, um, including the robot. So I, I design things so that people can pick and choose what they want, sort of a la carte, build your own um, person kind of thing. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so in, in the sense of the female, you could pick uh, any one of our body types and attach the robot head to it. Um, and similarly with the male, we're going to have different male bodies and then different attachments um, that can be attached to, to the body you've chosen. And then you have infinite control over the skin color, if you want freckles or not, um, hair color, and all, all of the little things that make each person unique. So you just said each person unique. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Um, do you think of them as people? I, I kind of think of them as characters. Uh, I don't know if they're like people like us, but uh, for me, the, the, they grow on me for sure. <laughs> and I do think of them as characters, not it. You know, it's, I, when I refer to the robot, I usually say he or she. I mean, it's interesting because I, I met Erica Eiffel, who's the woman who married the Eiffel Tower, and through her became aware of um, the sort of objectum sexual preference, which is like people who fall in love with buildings, the woman who fell in love with the Berlin Wall. And I think there's – I had a really interesting conversation with Erica because – the, the idea that you can you can project your emotions and your fantasies onto someone, but you don't actually know what they feel back. So I think even with a human, someone can express what they're feeling, but you can't ever actually understand fully their experience. And so I can kind of comprehend at some level that the, the emotional relationship you develop, like, you know, it's like, well, how do you know that the wall loves you back? Or how do you know that the, the robot character actually feels anything for you? So, I mean, how do you think that, that works well i think the mystery of love and being in love is is really uh it's like an onion there's a lot of layers to it um but ultimately i feel like um when you're feeling that for someone a lot of it is internal you you are the one whose body is pumping all these endorphins and you know different hormones into your bloodstream that make you feel you know like you're on cloud nine and so there, there has to be other ways to trigger that. That's how my brain works. I'm like, well, you could trigger it with virtual reality. You could trigger it with a robot or AI. So I think everyone is different, and everybody has different sort of things that are attractive to them. And this, this could actually be sort of a whole new um, direction for sexuality. There, there could be people out there who are robosexual, and they're attracted to the idea of a robot as a partner, um, I always use the example of, of a, a man who's in love with his car, and he spends every waking hour working on the damn car, shining it up. And, you know, it's not an intimate relationship, but it's a relationship nonetheless, and that car means a lot. So I think that same sort of thing applies on multiple levels with a, with a robot. Absolutely. I mean, I think we develop very emotional relationships with our technology as well. With the phones, it feels like an extension of us somehow. And I mean, also, I guess, for people who've been disappointed in love and want to choose the partner of their dreams without having to deal with all the messy realities and uncertainties of like an actual human, that you could bring still having that sort of emotional relationship and that passion and excitement into your life without having to scour the world or Tinder for like that one person who was going to make you feel that way. Right. Absolutely. 
And you know, I, I think that it's important to know that um, from, my, from my perspective, um, I always think of, of all the people out there who struggle to have relationships. Um, maybe they've been through and had multiple very deep, meaningful relationships that ended very poorly. Um, they've had their heart smashed enough times that they're just kind of done with it. Um, or someone who's never had it and they struggle to have it and, and they need it as much as everybody else. So this is a new alternative. It's, I, I, I have to say I was a little bit skeptical at first, but it's, it's making a lot more sense to me now. So I can kind of understand the emotional complexity and the way that that dynamic could really enhance people's lives, I guess. Absolutely. I think it's, if, if one looks at this with an open mind and kind of uh, put the sex off to the side for a moment and realize that, like a human relationship, it's not just about sex. And there's a lot of other emotional and mental layers to a relationship. And that's what the robotics and AI is about. Yeah, it's very interesting. I look forward to seeing how it develops. Um, and so my final question is, what is your vision for the future and how do we get there? Um, my vision for the future is a world where AI and robotics kind of develop to the point where there are robots that look like Westworld, but they're not bad guys. They're actually very helpful and very important members of our society. Um, I think that is an inevitable future. Um, some people fear it, but I think ultimately, if we can create something so beautiful that actually helps us and actually creates a better world for us that that can live with us side by side, I think that's, that's the future I see. And I think to get there, we just need to keep working very hard on, on the different technologies that go into it and also have an open mind. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me today. I really enjoyed it. <laughs>